Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Total Screws, back to the channel. This is your host with the most, aka also known as Nelson. And a quick disclaimer for all my newcomers coming around here, my new, my old comers as well. <clears throat> First and foremost, please see y'all stay hydrated, and this is water, just so y'all know. <sighs> Get a little parched. And Second part for this disclaimer is typically speaking, I try to get to the gist of the concept I'm trying to get to in the first five minutes if I possibly can. And after that, that's usually when I just expand on my thoughts and my process. <clears throat> the information is kind of swirling in my head. But with all that being said, and yes, I did get fancy on y'all asses real quick. Today, I just felt like it. And for those who do know me, you know that I usually wear my glasses. And yes, I did take out my glasses so I could dramatically Put them back on the ass. Anyhow, let me get to the brunt of this particular video. And this is something I have to the hold on, y'all. Think about that because that is bothering me as I'm looking at the camera. Anyhow, today, this is something I have been meaning to cover in the past for a long time. But I thought to myself, well, maybe I kind of want to wait until somewhere down the road, maybe about a few more months, to just, you know, see if we can uh, gain a few more folks around here. But then I thought to myself that, you know, I feel like this is today, I feel like this is something I just need to get off my chest today. And a few things I'm going to get off my chest, but I'll probably post it over time. But anyhow, stay focused on, stay on track here, y'all. Today, I just want to cover something that... I think typically speaking, most people understand, but at the same time, I think that, again, I think, I don't know for a fact, I just think that a lot of folks come up into the world really don't know the significance that each of these things play to our lives. And what I'm speaking about, and probably as you can see on the title, it has to do with the four different aspects of human existence. And you might be kind of scratching your head and think to yourself, well, what do you mean by that? And consider that, again, once again, y'all, I'm going to speak in the matter of being objective about these things. So, depending on how you want to look at each stage, can be subjective in a way. And I'm not trying to toss that out of the window by all means, but I just want to know, I just want y'all to make sure you know where I'm approaching this. Excuse me. But anyhow, let's get into this. Now, the first aspect I do want to touch, and... Just so you guys know, probably down the road, I'm going to break, I'm going to break down each one individually in a, a different video, but this one, I just want to call I, I identify them and I'm going to speak a bit on them as I go back in the beginning. But the easiest one I think most people should be able to grasp is the physical aspect, right? Easily enough, your body, right? The physical space around you, the uh, camera. Or not the camera, y'all, excuse me, but like say your phone or your laptop or wherever you're watching this video on, right? You can physically touch it with your hands. You can have that sensation that you physically identify as, even with your eyes. Even though, you know, the human senses can be tricked and they are limited by all means. So our perception of reality is limited to a certain extent. Like say, for example, I'm going to give you all a quick example before I move on to the next one real quick. It's like, say, for instance, if you look at the night nice sky... Just let's say if you just go back, if you just go in your uh, backyard, right? You look at the night sky, and depending on time, I guess it depends. You can see the stars, right? You may not see a lot of stars, but you see some stars. Now here's the thing: the naked eye, your eyes can only perceive these few dots in the sky, right? But let's say if you have a telescope, which has been relatively around for a few hundred years it's not something that's been necessarily new in terms of observation amongst the stars but it's a technology that has been definitely enhanced it has definitely been improved upon and let's say if you were to go to one of let's say one of the telescopes that uh that astrologers use in terms of mapping out different planets and what have you the thing is their physical eyes within the capability of these telescopes can perceive these different anomalies that can be going on in space, like black holes, different planets, different solar systems, because they have the means where there's some kind of physical 
bit of equipment that enhances the vision, but by itself is going to be limited. But there is a way you can cope and you can overcome it in that fashion. Now the next one I'm gonna speak. Uh, hold up, I do want to correct. I do want to catch myself real quick because I should have mentioned this early in the beginning. Just so y'all know, just kind of like map it out for y'all real quick is the way I'm approaching the subject is say, since it's dealing with the four the four aspects of human existence, where I'm starting is the physical, which is our external being. Now, the rest of our three, well, two to an extent, but more so three, in a way, is going to now come into our internal perspective or from the more internal being of ourselves. Now, the next one I'm going to touch on is the mental, right? And this one, actually, you could say is the bridge between our physical form or the physical aspect of our existence and it branches, or it's the chain link. I'll even say that. It's the chain link that connects everything else. I'll say that. Now, your mental is the thing. Some people can make the argument that our consciousness is tethered to our brains or tethered to the mind. Some could make the argument that it's tethered to the concept of a soul, which we're going to touch up soon. But the thing is this, at the end of the day, what most people cannot dispute, and it should be, again, based in the sense of reality or a sense of logic. The thing is this, at the end of the day, every action that we take, it has to come from up here. Every kind of action that we take comes up here. For example, if you sneeze, right? Obviously, your brain is just reacting to something, let's say, kind of tickling your nose. If you were, let's say, for the most part, taught as a young kid, you know, to cover your mouth, you know, just do this, right? When you sleep. Then it gets to a point where you don't even have to necessarily think to yourself, just in the moment you're about to sneeze, nine times out of ten, you don't have to think to yourself automatically or say to yourself, oh, I need to cover up my mouth. You just automatically will just be like this, right? That's where our subconscious mind can take over. See, and again, y'all, I'm going to go more detail on this later down the road. But just to say that when we think about the conscious mind, we can't forget our other uh, self in a sense. It's the subconscious mind because they work in tangent with each other. But the thing is this, that's not all the time. And the and this has come to the point why I want to bring this up in the first place is because oftentimes, and again, I'm going to do a video on this about the super ego, the ego, and the id. Not in that order, but just to name them. Because I find it interesting that when you look at a lot of media, it often talks about, or you find a lot of people who discuss about the ego and like movies, art, literature. And one of my issues that comes with the concept of how people will say, Oh, you need to knock your ego down a peg. My thing is, I do agree that if the sentiment is you want to humble people, right? Or let's say this, if you want to essentially encourage people to commit to the concept of ego death, killing your ego. But the thing is this, your ego doesn't stay dead forever. You could say like this, you're like, imagine your ego as a phoenix. Every time it dies, it is reborn. Now, here's the thing, though. If you want to take that analogy, right, you want to run with it, the thing is this. It's ultimately up to you to decide, do you want essentially the phoenix to grow weaker as it's being reborn, or do you want it to grow stronger? Now, you might say, well, how do you do that? Now, there are various ways that can go about it. And like I said, y'all, we can touch that on another video. But I just want to allude to that real quick and just say this. Right now, again, when it comes to our physical aspect, that's more simpler manner because we can physically perceive it. The mind, however, becomes a little more trickier. Now we're going to move on to, this, to a third aspect that, again, it gets trickier and trickier as we're looking at it. Because, again, it makes it more difficult for our senses to pick up, especially outside of ourselves. And then alternately, we don't, may not be able to fully comprehend how to handle it. Because we're trying to find a way, can there be a means to physically represent it? 
Now let's go into our emotions. Because again, that becomes a little trickier. Because here's the thing. Emotions are fleeting. And for those who don't know what fleeting means, it's it's like it's touch and go. Like for a quick example, I'll give y'all. Like think about the emotions of, I mean, you could say, mm, okay, for the sake of this example, I'm going to say that you could make the argument that love is a, can be perceived as an emotion, right? But here's the thing. If we took it like that, I can admit that I have love for pizza, right? And I can have a love for my mother. But most people understand that the love for your mother, or I'll say this, for me, I understand that the love that I have for my mother and the love that I have for pizza trumps pizza, right? Pizza will never get close to my mother, to the love I have for her, right? Now, let's take pizza again, and let's say cupcakes. Now, personally... I do enjoy cake. If you know my gamer, if you know my gamer tag, you know I like cake. Both the pastries and the uh, other form, discussing the physical form, you know what I'm talking about. Wink, 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 wink. Uh, anyhow, if I compare the love between cake or cupcakes in a sense and pizza, the thing is they probably will match each other well enough. One might get a little ahead of the other, but the thing is this, they're never going to be where I'm going to have a strong opinion about, oh, one should topple over the other, right? Because it's consistent. But let's say this, the concept of love in terms of it being conditional or, not, or unconditional, that can fluctuate over time. Because again, it's easy for me to say, oh, I would definitely have, like when you're a child, it's easy for you to have definitely a lot of fleeting emotions. Like you can say, oh, I love my mama so much. And then let's say if she does something that you don't like, it's easy for you to go as the child and say, oh, mama, I hate you. And you stop, and, you know, you throw a fit. That's simple. Now, of course, I would, of course, hope that, give me a second. Like y'all, I would hope most people, or let's say a good portion of people in the world, let's be honest, are maturing well enough. Because there's another thing I want to touch up on, y'all, real quick. Because again, there's a purpose I'm bringing this up is for each aspect of our existence, we should be able to, of course, if we're given the means to do so, mature as we're going along in life. So not just maturing physically as you're physically in an adult, right? If you, if you physically reach adulthood physically, let's not even say 18 years old. Let's at least say by the age of 25, because you also got to consider too the brain now, again, go to the mental. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say technically when it comes to the brain, maturing fully in its development is supposed to be either 25 or 26. I want to say he's either 25 or 26 or between the two. But anyhow, that's why I'm saying at least 25 or 26. Anyhow. And then the thing is this. If you can mentally mature as time is progressing, hopefully and you've had plenty of positive examples or you are able to take a lot of positive uh, experiences from certain traumas and what have you, not to justify them, but that's just to say that in each aspect, as you're maturing, you're becoming more so to your true self, or you're becoming the better version of yourself, right? Now, here's the thing. If you mature in your mental state, you are improving and maturing in how you determine or how you are expressing your emotional state. For instance, like I said, it's easy for us as children to justify the way that we throw a tantrum, right? It's easy to justify it. But let's say if you look at someone who's what? 20, 30, 40, shit, in their 50s. If you're throwing a tantrum at your when you're 50 years old, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. There's some part of your mind that can't help but question, how is it that you 50 years old, but you crying, and you got... Now, and you know what? Uh -uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do y'all something better. It's not even if they're crying. It's, it's not that. You'll have some of these... Folks, 50s, 60s, even today's 70s, 80s, 90s, all the way today, 
deathbed. Let's tell the truth. All the way to their deathbed. And they'll have that scowl on their face. Like they still some like they like they are like that spoiled child that again don't get his way or get her way or get their way, however you want to put it. And the and the fucked up part about that, y'all, is this. Because I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm not the only one who's gone through this. Where, and I'm gonna use an example, right? My father, right? I'm gonna use him as a, a quick example. And I get, I've had this conversation with him several times over the course of, to me, feels like eight years, but I suppose to be fair, it's six, but in my mind, for some reason, I want to count. Well, now nah, I'm going to tell, you, I'm gonna tell you all the truth. It's been more than eight, but I'm, I'm taking it in consideration to the decline of his health, right? I'm taking that in consideration. And the thing is this, y'all, ever since his health was deteriorating in the start of it, you know what? I realized something. I realized that his mental capacity was not the same. Now, that doesn't mean he wasn't able to do, you know, move around or what have you. But I noticed that a lot of his inhibitions started to deteriorate, meaning the things that let's say he would have more so a control over saying or doing, it started to lessen over time. And I started to perceive it. And one day I remember I told him that, for me personally, I can't speak for my siblings. I can't speak for other people. I can only speak for myself here. For me personally, if, if we understand the sentiment of if it quacks like a duck, it, it walks like a duck. If it has feathers like a duck, it's a duck, right? So here's the thing. If you're going to pout like a child, if you're going to be moody like a child, if you're going to be disrespectful as a child, if you're not going to be not communicated, communic communicated, if I'm saying that word right, probably not, as a child, then again, despite your physicality, the manner in which you're carrying yourself is that of a child. So the thing is this, how do you think I have to internally digest that as a young man to look at a grown man and still try to find some understanding or reason, a logical reason why I should still communicate with you as if you are still carrying yourself as an adult. Again, respect your elders. That's understandable. But guess what? Just because you're an elder does not mean you get a pass for acting like a jackass. Let's be honest, ladies and gentlemen. Quit that shit. And uh, Oh, and trust me. I'm going to cover that at some point in time. Trust and believe. But anyhow... From the emotion standpoint, let me move on to the final one. And the final one, like I said, either you can take it or you can leave it, depending on your particular stance on this. And let me make something clear on this particular one. Because yes, for most people who probably can guess already what I'm about to touch on is spirituality. Now, let me make something very clear about this concept for the most part, or this aspect, if you want to take it there. Because... Some people can make the argument like, oh, we don't have a soul, or oh, we do have a soul, or we have this life essence of us. Some of us are just feel like, you know, we're just batteries, and we're just going to run out, we're just that. That's all good and well, because let me make something very clear. Spirituality, because I'm going to give a quick disclaimer for this, and again, this is just me personally. Y'all don't have to agree on this, but for me personally, it's like for me personally, y'all, hold on. Okay, okay. I'm doing a decent time on what I want. Anyhow, let me stay focused. For me, when it comes to spirituality, spirituality or the spiritual realm, I would personally refer to the concept of metaphysics. That's where I would say it. Well, we have the physical, we have metaphysics. Metaphysics, to me, is, you could say, kind of like a in my mind, let me make something clear, y'all. I'm not saying this is the quote full-blown definition of it. I'm just saying, in my mind, this is how I interpret the word metaphysics. Whereas, great analogy I'm about to use, y'all. Imagine physics as an umbrella. You have the handle, right? You have the rod. 
the umbrella in itself that's, you know, you know, keeping the water from the top of your head while having it already in your body. That is what encompasses our mental, our emotional, and here comes the spiritual because it functions in a place where our physical perception cannot perceive. Just so y'all know that. But to touch on to, excuse me y'all, the spiritual, before I get off of this video, is this. With the spiritual, let me make something clear, is that you don't have to necessarily believe in a quote-unquote religion. Or you don't have to necessarily have to have a set of, let me not say that, let me not say that. You don't have to necessarily follow a, or tie yourself to a particular ideology or a particular religion necessarily. However, the thing is this, your spiritual foundation is, and uh, you know what, before I even say anything, y'all, I got to give a quick shout out to my, uh, to my aunt for this particular analogy I'm about to use for y'all. Because I remember one, a long time ago, she said this to me, and it really made a lot of sense to me, and I never took it like this. She told me that when it comes to people, people's spiritual temple right for some of y'all who might have gone to like a bible study or you might have come with it from a religious background you probably heard about you know like say the body is the temple right so let's say this you have to take into consideration what are you housing within your temple so let's look at spirituality as like the raw state of material that we can take upon ourselves to structure our temple and the values, the beliefs, or the lack of beliefs and principles that we hold for ourselves, we put within our temple to guard it, to give it structure, to give it purpose, to put it on display for others, or keep it safeguarded from others. Again, there are different ways you can structure your, excuse me, y'all. <clears throat> Pardon me. Ooh. Our temple. And the thing is this. Some of us, speaking of religion, because I'm going to touch on this real quick. And like I said, I'm going to touch this on a separate video to go more in depth on this. But just to give you all a quick overlay of what I would cover on that is this. When you think of religions, again, let's look at it from the perspective of we're building our own temples. Every single one of us. Some of us, let's say, have built a structure so refined in our eyes that we say we should pass this along to other people that let's say, may not have the fortitude to say, I can do all of this. Like they can make shift shit, of course, but let's say they want to build a more stronger foundation, right? Ultimately, they're going to have to scrap. And some people may not have the resources within themselves to spend and do that. So instead of going the route of making it of their own accord, they might say to themselves, you know, I'm going to take from this particular place. I'm going to take it from this particular influence. And they might build something of their own accord or they just, for the most part, just inherent a pre-existing building and here's the thing y'all go about drop something on your asses real quick should i should i do it oh no, no, no i'm gonna go ahead and do it i'm gonna do something better for your asses this is what they do either this either they take similar blueprints right and they add it to their own structure to their own temple or they inherit a pre-existing temple and they take the raw material of spirituality they did possess and they have a choice either they can essentially donate their existing material to to register to the regis not the registration to the um Ah, what's the word? What's the word? I don't know. Why is this escaping me right now? Hold up, y'all. Hold up, y'all. What's the word? What's the word? Uh, to uh, renovations to the temple for it to keep up. Okay? Because that material has to come from somewhere. Now, here's the thing. You also have the choice of saying, I'm not about to give that to them. Better yet, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to leave the material right here and I'm not even going to touch it. That's also a choice to consider. Now, to end on this particular video, and again, y'all, to try to combinate why I even brought this concept up in the first place, y'all, is to say this. 
every stage that contributes to our existence plays on each other. Like I said, the mental is the chain link that keeps it all connected, but they all affect each other on some different level or some different scale or what have you. So this is something I want y'all to hopefully take heed of. And of course, like I said, give me your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section down below, okay? But with that being said, to finish my thoughts on this, the whole purpose why I wanted to get on here and tell y'all, or I wanted to, not tell y'all, but I wanted to bring this up is because if we can all understand the importance of making sure that we're striving to be healthy in our physical being, in our mental being, in our emotional being, and our spiritual being, again, we're making more so the effort to, to bring the best out of ourselves. If I can hate, I don't know why I felt like I was going to, not hate y'all. If I can have the capacity to show my neighbors and show myself that every day I'm working towards improving my physicality, not necessarily getting buff or getting swole, but taking care of myself physically as in, hey, did you drink enough water today? Have you stayed hydrated today? Hydrate today. Have you got enough proteins? Have you been good on your diet? Okay. And guess what? If you're working towards these goals that you set for yourselves in the physical, this helps you with your mental. Because with your mental, it reinforces that, hey, your willpower is improving. You're committing to your actions that reflect your principles. All right. And that affects your spiritual being. That affects how you house your principles, your beliefs, your views of this, that, and the third. And real quick, should I say it right here? No, no, no. I'm going to say that for another video. I'm going to say that for another video. All right. But to get to the uh, emotional real quick. Excuse me all a second. But get to the emotional is this. And for some reason, by the blank on me. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I was going to say. For the emotional side, I'll say this. Is at the end of the day, y'all, like I always say, or excuse me, for those who know my golden rules and plus one, my plus one is this. Let's be objective first and be subjective second at the best of times. The thing is this. Our emotions help us perceive and digest our subjective viewpoint of things. So it's important to understand how do we distinguish, again, our emotions from, or excuse me, how do we distinguish the effects our emotions have from our subjective viewpoint in making sure that it is not overtaking our objective viewpoint? Again, it's about how are you maturing in every aspect to bring the best version of you every single day? And guess what? If you falter, y'all, have grace for yourself. Of course. Say, I falter plenty of times. And I won't lie, y'all. Do I beat myself up a little bit? <laughs> not just a little bit, but I do. I won't lie to y'all. But at the same time, I do give myself the grace to know that, look, if you're not perfect on your diet, there's tomorrow. If you're not perfect in, you no know, communicating your emotions and what have you, you got tomorrow. And if you don't got tomorrow, then just make peace of what you were able to do today. And that's it. That's the best thing most of us can do at the end of the day, y'all. But anyhow, I, I know this video is going long enough, y'all. So again, if you're new, thank you for coming to the channel. Again, thank you for checking this video out. If you made it this far, I truly appreciate you. And also to my old comers, thank you very much for checking out this video. Again, if you enjoyed it, please like the like, the like button. If you didn't like it, dislike the like button. I mean, hit the dislike button. Comment your thoughts, your concerns, yada, 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 in the comment section down below. Post notifications. Subscribe if you want to. If you don't, it's cool. Anything else that I'm forgetting? No, I'm not. I don't think so. If I do, I'll probably put it in the comment section down below. Anyhow, <laughs> I'll catch y'all later. Peace. Oh, real quick. If y'all be so kind too, and I uh, just so you guys know, typically speaking, I do post my uh, social, my Twitter, in the uh, description, but in my, the description box below. So hey, 
Y'all tell me how I look at this blazer. Looking good? I think it look good. Y'all tell me how y'all think. But anyhow, <laughs> I'll catch y'all there. Peace. Love y'all.